Welcome to this Data Craftsman's Guild tutorial on SQLite Studio features. We're going to be going over the main tools and features within SQLite that help you as a data professional to do your work more efficiently. So we're going to go ahead and start by opening up SQLite Studio. And you can see that as we do so, we have our two databases uh, that you've probably seen in some of our other videos here in our main page. Okay, so the first thing that I want to point out is there's tabs and then there's this icon bar up at the top. Now you can move this icon bar around. There's a few different ones that are connected together and you can kind of put those where you want and make it customizable. These tabs contain most of the things that are in the icon bar uh, with the exception of this view tab where you can change the look of the uh, SQLite Studio. So. Uh, with that being said, we're going to go over just the main tools. So first thing is this database tab here. You can see that these are kind of grouped together. And this basically functions as a way to add and remove databases into this space here. So, you know, we have our add database icon here, an edit database feature, and then a removal. And then you can also connect and disconnect from a database. So you can kind of see how that works here with disconnecting, connecting, and then if I wanted to edit this one, I can change where the file is located. Sometimes if the database file needs to move somewhere else, uh, you'll need to reconnect it here and uh, move it over. Now you can see that this says permanent, keep in configuration. That's just basically saying that it's gonna stay here in this list. So as a matter of you know, editing the database, there's that option, and then also being able to remove a database if you need to. Now, sometimes databases, generally SQLite databases will refresh on their own, but if they don't, you can always come up here and refresh it to make sure you have the most up-to-date data in the cases where you might be uncertain if it has updated or not. Now, obviously within a database, we have tables and if you click into one of these databases, you'll see this option for creating a new table. And you can explore this on your own, but if you wanted to create a new table, you just click on that. You can see that there are new icons within here that you can click on. You can move which columns go where. And then as you add a column, you can set primary keys, foreign keys, the data type, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm gonna end up not creating this table. So let me just remove this here and click close anyway. And we'll move on to some of the other features that we have. If I click on album, you'll notice that even more icons pop up. There's the edit table and delete table options, as well as this new one here that we haven't seen. Uh, and it is an index creation. So indexes effectively function to make your queries faster. They make it so that it can find the data quicker. Now some some of these may have an index already. For example, the customers column has an index on the customer support rep ID. So if I wanted to, now that you see I clicked on that, I can edit this index or delete it. Uh, we want to keep it because it makes our SQL queries faster. Now there are some more options here. There's a create trigger function. And a trigger basically acts as a way to initialize an event before or after another event occurs within your database. So if I insert a new row of data into my customer column, I can have it trigger another action either within that table or within another table. So they can be very powerful in creating an automated database that updates different tables based on other table, other tables that have been updated. So a very powerful tool. Uh, again, you can edit or delete the trigger. And those are, those are some good options there for managing your database. Another great tool is adding a view to your database. Now a view is basically a SQL query 
that you save in your database. It's very effective for if you need to create reports. Um, let's say that on this invoice table, why don't we go ahead and just pull up a query. And you can see there's, if we query it here, there's a total dollar amount. If you wanted to sum everything where the customer ID was two, then you could do that writing a SQL query and then you can also save it here as a view. And you can see actually right here within this uh, query, you can say que create this view based on what I've put in here. So very powerful and effective way to create reports that are automatically updated and uh, just very powerful tool there. Let's go ahead and close this. This basically just opens up a SQL editor window that is blank. Uh, it allows you to write your own syntax. And I mean, you can say select all from uh, whatever table you want to use. So that, that's a useful feature if you want to add another query, if you want to create your own SQL query. Um, and then this one is also very effective. And this one is the DDL history. DDL stands for Data Definition Language and it essentially represents how the database is structured. So if you click into here, you can see some of the changes that were made to the database. Uh, there it says that there have been 10 and that the last execution was on the 6th of November. So, and that last one here was this drop trigger. This is a good way to version control your database. If you dropped a trigger and you want to recreate that trigger, you can always come back and pull this up, um, copy it, and then paste it over into a SQL editor window where you can run it and recreate those uh, triggers or whatever else that you are uh, creating within your database. So it's a very powerful tool for those functions. Okay, close this here. Okay, we're gonna jump over here to the import window icon. I should say icon. <laughs> um, and import is a very powerful function as well. We can basically add any CSV file to our tables and we can have our, our choice of which table we wanna add it to. And then there are other data source types that you can import. So. Very powerful tool. You essentially just find the file. Uh, I don't have one to import right now, but you would find it there. And then you do have a few other options to ignore errors. And this is an important one. The first line of the CSV represents column names. So depending on the file you get, you may or may not have a column name. Uh, if you do, it would be wise to check that. You also have this option down here to fill the null values with a certain value. Um, but I don't know of a circumstance where you'd want to do that uh, off the top of my head. So once you do all that, you just come down in here and click finish and it would import that data into whatever table you selected. Export is also a very good function. It allows you to do three things. You can either export the entire database, uh, a single table, or a query result. So when you export a database, you can either export just the structure of the database, or you can export the structure and the, um, the data as well, as long as you come down here and select that label. Uh, so again, you would just kind of follow this format here. If you were to do this, I would recommend doing it in a SQL file so that when you when you go to save your file, you can run it and import it into another SQLite database. Um, there's some other options here, generate drop ifs. This is important if you have a database that may already exist and you wanna just completely replace it. Um, and again, you would just hit finish. So that's the option for the, da uh, the database. There is the single table option and the query results. Um, I would. I would probably show you this one next, the query results. You essentially just copy and paste your SQL query in here, and then it will export it 
as a, a queried result, which is nice. Um, so you can kind of experiment with that if you want. I won't go any further into detail on it. The final thing that we can look at is our configuration dialog box. There are a number of options that you can look through here. There's some general configuration information. There's some keyboard shortcuts if you want to alter those or, or even just come and learn what they are. This is a good re reference to, to look up here. You can change the look and feel, the language, and kind of how it's laid out. You can choose how the database list over here is configured. Um, you can also come over here to data browsing and you can see some of those options there as well. There's also these data editors. So you can kind of see here if you wanted to add an image uh, kind of editor that allows you to see images. If those are stored in your database, that's a pretty handy feature. I'm actually going to apply that because I like that feature. And then plugins for SQL. And you can also import your own as well. Okay, so that's pretty much all of the icons up here. And that's basically an overview of a lot of the features that are in SQLite. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about SQLite, you can check out some of our other videos. And if you would like, you can subscribe and get more of our, our channel videos. Uh, thank you, and we'll hope to see you at the next video.